Today we're discussing protein. In my second year of pharmacy school, Dr. Ward, my professor of anatomy and physiology, on the very first day of our lectures, at the very start of the first lecture, stated, we are made out of protein, and this is very nearly true. Protein is one of the basic building blocks of the human body. We are mostly made up of water. The amount of fat varies from person to person, and even a very obese person consists of more water than fat. We're about 6% minerals, such as calcium and phosphorus and magnesium. We're only 1% carbohydrate, which is surprising, but we're 16% protein. It's a macronutrient. Protein is a macronutrient, fat's a macronutrient, carbohydrate's a macronutrient, which means you have to consume a lot. But unlike fat, you cannot store protein, so you have to get adequate amounts in a diet every day. Now, as far as protein, there's different types in the body. For instance, our muscles. Protein is very important to our muscles. Our muscles contain about 20% muscle protein. And of course, if you do a lot of exercise, it probably contains more. About 35% of our body is present as collagen protein. There's a number of different collagens in the human body. So 70% of our skin is collagen. Now we make less collagen with age. Just to mention this, there's a lot of collagen supplements. They vary from quality to quality. And collagen is not a complete protein. It doesn't make up for having a complete protein like a whey protein or dietary proteins. Collagen is a special case. Older people need to take collagen because they're making less of it, and you need it to repair the body and maintain the body and rebuild the body because 70% of the skin is collagen, as I just mentioned. And as collagen production slows down with age, you could see it. You could see the wrinkles. You could see the thinning of the skin. You could see the crepey skin. It's 67% of our joint cartilage, so you could feel it because the cartilage is that hard, slippery stuff that keeps your bones from banging together. It's 35% of our bone. Uh, that's what the, uh, it's the superstructure of the bone, the framework of the bone. We call it the organic matrix. 90% uh, of the organic matrix of the bone is made out of collagen protein, and this is what calcium and other minerals and nutrients attach to to build bone. It's the lion's share of the uh, content of our ligaments and tendons and menisci. The menisci are these pie-shaped wedges that keep our, our knees in place. It's important that we eat enough protein every day to cover our body's needs. Protein helps us uh, maintain the proper amount of fluids in the body. It builds and repairs our tissues. It transports nutrients. It provides many scores of other additional functions, uh, actually hundreds. So welcome to our Protein and the Benefits of Individual Amino Acids episode. Hi, my name's Jerry Hickey. I'm a pharmacist who also has studied nutrition, and I'm over here at Invite Health. I'm also the scientific director, and I'd like to talk to you today about what you need to um, get sufficient protein in your diet. How much do you need? What it does for you? And if a supplement, which protein powder to take? Proteins made out of amino acids, these are strung together to make protein. And besides taking a protein supplement, you can individually supplement with amino acids. So I'm going to discuss the important uses of each of these amino, amino acids. Their benefits could be substantial. So please be sure to subscribe to the Invite Health Podcast today and please leave us a review. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Invite Health. All of the information on today's episode will be linked in the episode description and you can visit invitehealth.com forward slash podcast for more information. Let's go to a break before I really get into this. We'll be right back. Jerry Hickey, Invite Health. This podcast is brought to you by invitehealth.com. For over 20 years, Invite Health has provided premium quality supplements and expert advice you can trust. Now, first-time customers can enjoy an exclusive offer. Visit invitehealth.com slash podcast or click the link in this episode description. That's invitehealth.com slash podcast for your exclusive offer on Invite Health products. Invite Health offers the resources you need to make important decisions about your health. Chat live with degreed healthcare professionals, get product information, and find retail locations near you at invitehealth.com. You can also learn about our new genetic testing program and our exclusive Invite Fitness Wellness Program. Follow Invite Health on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and be sure to subscribe to our podcast today. Now back to our episode. Okay, welcome back. We're talking about protein, and we're going to talk about if you separate the individual ingredients of protein called amino acids, what benefits can they be expected to achieve? Because they really can have substantial benefits. 
as I mentioned, protein's a macronutrient. You need to consume it every day, and you need enough. Unlike fat, you can't store it. Dietary sources of protein, you know them. They include meats, dairy products, fish, eggs. For vegetarians, grains, legumes, and nuts. So for vegetarians, foods with protein concentrations that are pretty darn good include legumes like soybeans, lentils, kidney beans, white beans, mung beans, chickpeas, and lima beans. They have at least 7% protein content. That's pretty good. Tree nuts, they have a lot of protein. Almonds, Brazil nuts, cashews, pecans, walnuts. Seeds like pumpkin seeds, hemp seeds, sesame seeds, sunflower seeds, flax seeds. In many countries... And this includes populations of over several billion people. Edible insects are a major source of protein. Mm. How much protein is enough? Well, adult men in general need about 56 to 60 grams a day. Adult women need about 46 to 50 grams a day. If you're pregnant or breastfeeding, you need more. So speak to your uh, gynecologist obstetrician, but generally about 71 grams. You should get at least 10% of your daily calories but not more than 35% from protein. This is according to the Institute of Medicine. But of course, if you're healing or attempting to build muscle, you need more protein. So choose the healthiest sources. For instance, salmon, eggs, and beans. They're good sources. Red meat has saturated fats, and too much of these are bad for your heart. Now, poultry. What about poultry? I've read a lot about poultry In the past year, there's been some really exciting news about poultry. It actually seems to be healthy. If you remove the skin, you you remove a lot of the carcinogens that were formed during the cooking process, but you're also removing most of the fat. So poultry is actually a healthy food choice, according to a lot of recent data. And at worst, it's neutral for health. It's not going to hurt it, but it's still a good source of protein. Now, some protein sources have additional health benefits. Fish, like salmon... And anchovies, not only do they have protein, they also have magnesium. They also have um, taurine, which is a sulfhydryl amino acid. And they have fish oils, essential for health. Fish oils are needed for your brain and your memory, for your eyes, for your heart, for your muscles, for your joints. Legumes, they're high in protein, but they're also high in fiber. And they contain phytochemicals that work as antioxidants that protect us from inflammation and free radicals. Try to eat protein throughout the day instead of cramming it into one meal. This is really essential for the elderly. Elderly people absorb protein less efficiently than young people, and they don't utilize it well. So if you split up their protein servings into 20 grams three times a day, they'll use it better. That's why I frequently recommend that older people, just like people who do a lot of exercise, should take a whey protein supplement once a day just to make sure we're giving them enough protein. Uh, By the way, if you're eating your protein, you have to keep up your fruit and veggie portions to get the uh, vitamins, the minerals, the antioxidants, the fiber, etc. Your protein needs increase if you are very active. The Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics, but also the American College of Sports Medicine, believe that athletes need additional protein or they will lose muscle and strength. So endurance athletes. Now, endurance athletics would be running or cycling. They need to consume uh, 1.2 to 1.4 grams of protein per kilogram. A kilogram is 2.2 pounds. So they need more than the average person. The average person needs about 0.8 grams per, per kilogram. Strength training athletes need more. You know, these are power lifters and weight trainers, people who consistently lift weights. Uh, Protein helps you to maintain body tissues, including your muscles, your organs, your nervous system, your blood. Yeah, your cells are made out of protein. Your skin and hair. All of the uh, cells, including your immune cells and red blood cells, incorporate protein. In fact, inside your red blood cell, there's hemoglobin that carries oxygen. That's the red stuff in the blood cell. That requires protein to be made. And the proteins in your blood deposit things around the body like fats and vitamins and minerals. In addition, eating protein can help you manage your weight. First of all, it takes longer to digest a protein-rich meal. But after you consume protein, you're likely to feel full. You're satisfied longer. It's satiating. It makes you feel like the amount of food you ate was sufficient for the body's needs, which is true if there's enough protein For our muscle, 
protein is hugely important. About 40% of our body weight as a healthy adult is muscle. I mean, unless you do, you know, weightlifting or something, then it's more than 40%. But about 40% of a typical person's body weight as a healthy adult is muscle. About 20% of this muscle is made out of muscle protein. Plus, you need collagen protein to hold everything together, to hold the ligaments, the tendons, the muscles, the bones, the joints together. So protein is really important. Now, I mentioned that I like whey protein in particular because it's a complete protein. It supplies a good amount of all nine of the essential amino acids that our body needs on a daily basis. And in fact, over 60% of the total protein in whey comes from essential amino acids. This is according to the U.S. Dairy Council. I'm going to explain what essential amino acids do for you in just a minute. Uh, the particularly important set of essential amino acids, if you're looking at strength and muscles, are the branch chain amino acids. They're important for maintaining your muscle. They're important for building muscle. Branch chain amino acids are um, leucine, isoleucine, and valine. Now, according to the United States Dairy Council, whey protein has the highest concentration of branch chain amino acids compared to any other dietary source of protein. 26 grams of branch, branch chain amino acids per 100 grams of whey protein. That's pretty significant. Before we go into the uh, effects of branch chain amino acids, let's just go to a quick break. Jerry Hickey for Invite Health. We'll be right back. This podcast is brought to you by invitehealth.com. For over 20 years, Invite Health has provided premium quality supplements and expert advice you can trust. Now, first-time customers can enjoy an exclusive offer. Visit invitehealth.com slash podcast or click the link in this episode description. That's invitehealth.com slash podcast for your exclusive offer on Invite Health products. Invite Health offers the resources you need to make important decisions about your health. Chat live with degreed healthcare professionals, get product information, and find retail locations near you at invitehealth.com. You can also learn about our new genetic testing program and our exclusive Invite Fitness Wellness Program. Follow Invite Health on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and be sure to subscribe to our podcast today. Now back to our episode. Okay, welcome back. We're talking about protein and its components called amino acids. So three of these amino acids are called branch-chain amino acids. They're especially rich in whey protein. They're leucine, isoleucine, and valine. They impact muscle growth and the maintenance of your existing muscle tissue. Now, there's great research from the armed forces. On top of building muscle and nourishing muscle, branched-chain amino acids help you burn belly fat, especially if you consume enough leucine. So that's pretty cool. You're building muscle, you're burning belly fat. It's just the opposite of what happens when you have a desk job or as you grow older. So let's talk about a deficiency. Unlike fat and sugars, our body has little capacity to store protein. So if you were to stop eating protein, your body would start to break down your muscle. And this can have terrible consequences. On the flip side, it's also possible to eat too much protein. If you eat too much protein and you're not very physically active, the excess protein is not all lost in the urine like many people think. A lot of it will be converted into sugars, into glucose that could be used for energy. But if you're eating like a lumberjack and you're not exercising like a lumberjack, so if you're not physically active enough, it's going to be stored as belly fat. So if you eat too much protein, just like having too much of any calorie, you do run the risk of gaining weight. Now, proteins composed of amino acids, these are used throughout the body for so many different things. Protein has nine, the, the body has nine essential amino acids. That means we have to obtain them from food or a supplement. We don't make them. So to prevent protein energy malnutrition, which doesn't have a good ending, you need all nine of these essential amino acids every day. So here are the nine uh, essential amino acids. 
they can be used individually. They could be purchased individually. They have some really important activities. I'm only going to give you some of the major activities. Phenylalanine. Phenylalanine creates tyrosine. Now, that allows you to make your thyroid hormones. But it also creates dopamine, which is needed for arousal, for reward, so you can learn what's good for you and what's not good for you. It's needed for muscle function, balance, and coordination. It's needed to make um, phenylalanine also makes melanin for your hair and skin coloring. But just a message here. I don't normally recommend people take separate phenylalanine. I'd rather have them get it from their food or from a whey protein supplement. To make dopamine, phenylalanine will only work for a couple of days. There's kind of like this feedback mechanism that will stop it from being made from phenylalanine. So I don't find it all that useful. Now, the branch chain amino acids, the very nice leucine and leucine, we already uh, discussed this. They're good for your muscle strength. They're good for burning some fat. Histidine. It's a component of carnosine. So when I want to give somebody histidine, I just give them carnosine. Carnosine is important for your immune system. I mean, the reason people eat chicken soup and that it's, 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 it's um, good for infections is because of its um, carnosine component, which is made out of histidine and beta alanine. Histidine is also required for creating energy for muscle strength, for muscle function, for memory, for protecting the body from sugars. It has many, many activities. So rather than giving somebody histidine, I'd rather give them a supplement like, like whey protein, which has histidine, or I'll give them carnosine directly. By the way, carnosine and histidine, they both help protect your tissues from damage caused by radiation and heavy metals such as mercury, lead, aluminum, arsenic, etc. Lysine. Lysine is a very important component of connective tissue and of your collagen for tissues all over your body. Lysine also makes carnitine. Carnitine allows you to use food and oxygen for energy. Carnitine is very good for your muscles, your strength, your lean body mass. Lysine is one of the nine essential amino acids required for growth, for tissue repair. It also seems to be active against the herpes simplex virus. So when uh, a client comes in and says to me, you know, Jerry, I get these herpes outbreaks. I tell them to take, we have a 500 milligram of lysine capsule. I say take four of these every day in between meals all at once, and it seems to help protect them. There's a lot of interesting information on that. Tryptophan. We usually use a form of tryptophan called 5-hydroxytryptophan. Tryptophan creates serotonin. And that's important to control your appetite. So if somebody's overeating, I'll give them 5-hydroxytryptophan right before a meal because the, the, the insulin released during a meal pushes the tryptophan into the brain and it's the 5-hydroxytryptophan into the brain. It's converted into serotonin and this controls your appetite. It stops you from overeating. But serotonin also helps treat depression and anxiety. Now, at night, tryptophan takes an additional step, the 5-hydroxytryptophan, and it becomes melatonin, which has myriad uses, including um, very supportive for the immune system, especially in older people that are losing immune system function. Uh, melatonin helps keep the hair in your head. Um, we've done a, a podcast on melatonin. Melatonin helps adjust your blood pressure at night. Melatonin is amazing for building bone, but everybody knows melatonin for sleep. Threonine. Most people have never heard of threonine. You need threonine to make T-cells. They're made in the thymus gland. T-cells are cells very important for killing cancer cells and viruses and bacteria. Threonine is ma need to make the mucus lining of your intestines. You need it to make tooth enamel, uh, to make collagen, to make elastin for your lung health. It's a mood stabilizer. It helps prevent fatty liver. Methionine. This one you have to be careful with. Too much methionine uh, can increase inflammation. What rules that? Getting enough B vitamins, getting enough folate. Use the active form of folate, methyl tetrahydrofolate. Enough B12, enough B6 help regulate methionine function. It's a sulfur-containing amino acid. That means the sulfur can be used for detoxifying, for building structures, working as a very protective antioxidant throughout the body. But methionine is needed for you like, like the pliability of your skin, hair, and nails. It strengthens your nails. 
Um, because of the sulfur, it allows you to detoxify pollutants and toxins and old spent drugs, drug residues, etc. Um, methionine helps slow cell aging. You need methionine so you can absorb selenium and zinc, and you need selenium and zinc for so many different things, including thyroid function and immune function. Methionine takes heavy metals out of the body, like lead and mercury and arsenic and cadmium, so it aids their excretion. Uh, it's also a lipotropic agent, which means it helps prevent fatty build, liver buildup. So once again, if you take methionine, you have to be on B vitamins to control the methionine. Now, I love whey protein because it supplies a good amount of all nine of these essential amino acids. It's well absorbed by us humans. It's well studied. It's good for muscle accretion, building muscle, and maintaining muscle. It's good for muscle recovery after exercise. It's good to help you with fat loss. If you take it after meals or during exercise, it helps you burn more fat and build more muscle. Appetite control. I've read studies you give a person a scoop of, of whey protein after breakfast, and it helps control their appetite until lunch. They're not picking. They feel satisfied with the amount of food they ate. It's an aid to blood sugar control. Now, there are six conditionally essential amino acids. So under certain conditions, you need extra of these. So I'm going to talk about these also. Cysteine. Now, I use a stable form of cysteine called NAC, N-acetylcysteine. That's an amazing uh, amino acid. NAC breaks up mucus. It's a mucolytic. NAC is, like, great for allergies. I mean, if you want to help somebody with allergies, certain probiotics help to train the body to ignore allergies to begin, begin with. We've done podcasts on that. But give them black seed with rosemary. Uh, black cumin seed, great for allergies, and then give them NAC. The black seed with the rosemary calms down the cells involved with allergies, and the NAC mops up anything out of the bloodstream that was released from those cells. If it gets past the effects of the black seed, it's, gr it's a great one-two punch for allergies. It's great. Then you don't have to use the antihistamines that can mess around with your memory. Now, NAC is great for the lungs, great for mucus, great for allergies. NAC improves circulation to the heart. NAC is one of the best supplements for protecting your lungs, by the way. NAC is perfect for the liver. It helps rejuvenate and heal the liver. It helps the liver detoxify because it creates a master antioxidant in the liver called glutathione peroxidase, which affects seven different detoxification pathways to rid the body of toxins and pollutants. NAC is also amazing for the brain. We've done a podcast on NAC for the brain. Glycine. Eh, I don't worry about glycine. You know, you get it in your food. Glutamine. Uh, glutamine is probably the most abundant uh, amino acid in the human body. You need it for healing. So if you're going for surgery or you have an injury, you could take extra healing. It's very good for healing the digestive tract if you have leaky uh, bowel syndrome. Uh, leaky bowel syndrome occurs when you don't have enough good bacteria. The bad bacteria inflame the lining of the intestines. And rather than being this nice solid tube containing toxins, etc., it becomes leaky and bad things are leaking out of the intestines and entering the bloodstream. So L-glutamine is one of the things, along with um, using probiotic bacteria for healing the intestines if you have leaky gut syndrome. And then there's tyrosine. Tyrosine is a great amino acid if you haven't slept. It's also used to make thyroid hormone. I think at this point we're going to take a, we're going to um, break the podcast down to a second podcast. I think we have to make it two episodes. So thank you for tuning into the Invite Health podcast. You can find all of our episodes for free wherever you listen to podcasts, or you could visit invitehealth.com forward slash podcast. Please make sure you subscribe. Please leave us a review. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Invite Health. We'll see you next time on the second part of this episode on protein and its constituent amino acids. And thank you so much for listening.